Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for listening. Today we're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 11. In this scripture, we're talking about loving and obeying the Lord. So please do take a moment to go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. And let us begin reading. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God. His majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm, the signs he performed, and the things he did in the heart of Egypt, both to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his whole country, what he did to the Egyptian army, to its horses and chariots, how he overwhelmed them with the waters of the Red Sea as they were pursuing you, and how the Lord brought lasting ruin on them. It was not your children who saw what he did for you in the desert until you arrived at this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, the Reubenite, when the earth opened its mouth right in the middle of all Israel, and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that belonged to them. But it was your own eyes that saw all these great things the Lord has done. Now let me stop right there. Israel at this particular time, according to my Life Application Bible, printed by Tyndale, Israel had strong reasons to believe in God and obey His commands. They had witnessed a parade of mighty miracles that demonstrated God's love and care for them. Incredibly, they still had trouble remaining faithful. Because few of us have seen such dramatic miracles, it may seem even more difficult for us to obey God and remain faithful. But we have the Bible, the written record of God's acts throughout history. Reading God's word gives us a panoramic view of both the miracles Israel saw and others they didn't see. The lessons from the past, the instructions for the present, and the glimpses into the future give us many opportunities to strengthen our faith in God. Now that I've read this, I've set you up for what it is that God is using me to speak to you about. It is time to record your history, whether it's your personal history, your journey with God, your family history, your work history, the triumphs, the failures, your relationship. It is time to record your history. Lessons from the past, instructions for the present and glimpses into the future. It's not good enough just to read the Bible. The Bible, for some people, they're reading it, but they're not able to comprehend how the Bible connects with their lives. They need something additional to help them whether it is someone to sit down and explain the scriptures or experiencing some things for themselves or listening to others' testimonies. They need to make the Word of God real in their lives. You see, when I read this, I jumped right into it because I wanted people to listen to it. And just listen. Some of you all immediately could connect to some of those things because you know how to take scriptures and apply them to your lives. But others heard it. Okay, what's the point? And if it's not good enough, then I think I'm going to click to something else that's going to suit my situation a little better. I understand. Some people are very much ready to just go about and look for only the things that apply to them. But you see, even if you don't feel like recording your family history, and even if you feel like the scriptures have nothing to do with your life, they just might have an impact on someone else's family history, biblical history, work history, spiritual history, whatever it is that you have to offer, it may not seem like much. 
these stories in the Bible may not seem like much. The fact that God did what he did to people long ago, brought them through, made good on his promises, may not seem like much to some of you all. But I will tell you that someone in your group, it just might bring them to tears. It just might bring them to repentance. It just might save someone's soul. A story that doesn't mean much to you might be gold to someone else. I'm learning this as I record history, as I note, note down things, whether it's dreams, things that happen in childhood, other people's accounts of their own personal experiences, things that I've noticed in the scripture, articles that I've written about all sorts of subject matter. What I'm learning is that it may not mean that much to me while I'm writing it, but I will tell you that somebody out there, it means a whole lot to them. A whole lot to them. The story that we read was a reminder of all the things that God did for people thousands and thousands of years ago. But what you can do is you can plug in your story when you're talking to individuals and talk about how the love of God and his love for you because you did listen to him and you followed through with what he said is why you got A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Going back to the scripture in the very beginning of chapter 11 in Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God and keep his requirements. Is that some information that might be able to help some members in your family? Is that something that you could note down in some family history? Is that something that you could be able to show and prove to someone who's wayward in the faith? Is that something that might be able to benefit someone coming along? Somebody needs to hear this message because, see, you're reading the scriptures, but you're not able to digest them in a way that will help yourself and others. But you can do it if you continue to read and if you continue to look for the gems in the scriptures, if you continue to take what you've learned and apply that information to your life, I guarantee you will be able to experience what it is that God wants you to experience in those words that he gives you. But you see, there's too many people that are just so busy and have little time and have more excuses as to why they can't just stop what they're doing, sit down for a little bit, open up the Bible, read it, think about it, and then note down some thoughts or Take what you've learned and apply it to a project that you're already working on. Or take what you know to be fact in your own life and use that information to help someone who's going through all sorts of trials. I love verse 2 because it says, especially to those of you all who have children or who teach children or who are even around children and you tend to be a wise spirit, if you will. Number two says, remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God. There are some things, saying that you experience that is exclusive to you. You can be the eyewitness. You can be the firsthand story. You can be the main character. You can be the featured person in whatever that project is that someone is working with. If you can communicate what it is that makes you so much in love with the Lord, what it is that makes you believe what you believe. Jumping down to verse 7. But it was your own eyes that saw all these great things the Lord has done. My question to you is, has God done anything, anything in your life that's noteworthy? Do you recall anything 
anything that you saw with your own eyes, not with your mother's eyes, not with your father's eyes, not with what the church said and the minister and the choir and your friend and her belief in God and his belief. Can you literally just think back to a time in your life where God impacted you so much that you can say, I know that God exists because I received and then you fill in a blank. Or I know that God was working with me through this situation and that situation because, and then you fill in a blank. Or I know it was nothing but God when I prayed for so-and-so and this happened. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus. Come on, someone, someone who feels compelled to start writing down information about the family history, about the work history, about even your marriage, or your journey through college or high school. Take heed to this message because God, just like he knocked on my heart and told me that I needed to pin some things down and get some photographs together, he's going to do the same for you. It wasn't a happenstance that you came across this message. Oh, you thought that we were just going to talk about Deuteronomy 11 in such a way where it was just going to be some, you know, information to keep in the back of your mind and somehow you figure out how the lesson applied to whatever you're going through. But what this does is it opens up a thought process a thought process that challenges you to use your spiritual experiences to minister to other people outside of the traditional way. That is, going up to people and talking to people and telling them or asking them, are you saved? And then providing your testimony, which is very braggadocious and so forth. Making that person feel like, well, if God does all these wonderful things, then maybe I should join the bandwagon. We don't want to necessarily come across like that, but rather we want to talk about the struggles and we want to talk about how it is that we come to know Christ and we can do that in a number of ways and it doesn't have to be just looking at someone across the table. And maybe that's why some people are not getting reached because people keep approaching them with the same old, same old. God is saying there's another way to talk to people. There's another way to use your testimony. Are you prepared? Are you ready? And some people aren't. Because they can't even note down the things that God is talking to them about. Or the things that they've experienced. They won't allow enough time to really delve deep into the scriptures. They won't sit quietly long enough to hear what God has to say. But yet they are angry or jealous or bitter or finding fault in other people who are able to do that and God is telling you that you are not right for doing it for some of you all you're upset that this one can write a PDF uh, a book or this one or electronic book ebook or this one can write a, a printed book or this one can do audio recordings or this one knows how to upload all sorts of cool information on a blog or social networking page. God is telling all of us who are believers to do something. There's nobody who is a child of God who is not doing something for him. Whether you are caring for life, cultivating life, talking on the phone, to people who are struggling, writing, recording, whatever it is. You're a believer and you have work to do. And so I'm not going to hold you up any longer. I hope that this is some food for thought, some confirmation for some of you all who have been struggling. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will be disciplined enough to save whatever money you need to start your project. I pray in Jesus' name that for those of you all who are not called to this sort of ministry, but you do know people who are, that you will support them. And I pray in Jesus' precious name that this message will be a blessing and not a curse. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, to God be the glory.